welcome back to our channel ability to learn by discovery day program happy friday hello and hi to you all yes you are saying things right i am back i have been a little busy this past week well i still am but i will try my best to show up at least once a week also wasn't that great that you were able to see some of the staff and teachers while i was away and you know what's better they will stick around more often too all right, it's time for our program. We had a lot of new content that we added for the past couple of weeks as we planned on making the show better. But as usual, we always start our day with some good old exercise. Have you guys been doing our daily exercises while I was gone? I would hope so, since we'll be doing it in three, two, one. Let's start with the warm up. Put your hands on your waist and start turning just your head to the left. Then turn it to the right. We're going to do this exercise for 16 counts. Make sure you perform this exercise on a pace you're comfortable with to avoid any injuries. Next, we're going to raise our hands forward, then up, then forward, then down. We're going to do this exercise for 8 counts. If you can't perform this exercise on both hands at the same time, try doing it on one hand first, then use your other hand after. Make sure you perform this exercise on a pace you're comfortable with to avoid any injuries. This time, we're going to raise our hands on the side, and then up, and then on the side again, and then down. We're going to do this exercise for 8 counts. If you can't perform this exercise on both hands at the same time, try doing it on one hand first, then use your other hand after. Make sure you perform this exercise on a pace you're comfortable with to avoid any injuries. Next, put your hands together like you're praying and we're going to start turning your upper body to the left while stretching your right arm. Then, go back to our original position and turn your body to the right while stretching your left arm. We're going to do this exercise for 16 counts. Even if you're in a wheelchair, you can still perform this exercise for your upper body. Next, make fists with your hands and place them close to your chest. Then, we're going to start stretching forward, back to your chest, 
on your side, then back to your chest. We're gonna do this exercise for 16 counts. Even if you're in a wheelchair, you can still perform this exercise for your upper body. Next exercise, make fists with your hands, then stretch them forward and start rotating your hands inward. We're going to do this exercise for 16 counts. Now, let's rotate our hands outward. Put your hands together and raise them on head level. Then, put your hands down on waist level while you raise your right knee. We're going to do this exercise for 16 counts. Now let's do it on the left knee. Next exercises will require a TheraBand for resistance. Before you engage in the next workout, be sure to perform these steps first. Step 1. Cut the TheraBand to your desired length. Step 2. Hold both ends of the TheraBand. Step 3. We're gonna triple knot the band. So, Make your first knot and make sure you leave enough ends for the second and third knots. Step 4. Make a second knot, then pull it tight. Make sure you pull tight from both top and bottom of the knot. Step 5. Tie the third knot to further reinforce the TheraBand. Also, make sure that the knots are not loose.
Okay, now we can continue with our workout. Now, for our next exercise, hold the TheraBand with both of your hands. Then, stretch your left arm on the side while your right arm is positioned on your chest. Keep your left arm steady, then start pulling the TheraBand with your right arm. We're gonna do this exercise for 8 counts. Make sure to ask for assistance if you can't use both hands. Try to do this exercise on a pace you're comfortable with to avoid injuries. Now, this time, stretch your right arm and keep it steady while you pull the TheraBand using your left arm. This exercise is also applicable if you're on a wheelchair. Next, we're gonna do bicep curls. If you're on a wheelchair, a staff assistance is required to place the TheraBand properly in order to perform this exercise. If you're not on a wheelchair, simply step on the TheraBand and keep your feet in place. Then perform the bicep curls. We're gonna perform this exercise one hand at a time. And we'll do eight counts for each hand. Now it's time to use your other hand. Next, position your hands to the side. Then, while holding the TheraBand, stretch your right arm forward. A staff assistance is required to place the TheraBand properly in order to perform this exercise. This exercise is also applicable if you're on a wheelchair. We're gonna perform this exercise one hand at a time. And we'll do eight counts for each hand. Now it's time to use your other hand. Try to do this exercise on a pace you're comfortable with to avoid injuries. Our next exercise is called shoulder press. A staff assistance is required to place the TheraBand properly in order to perform this exercise. Bend your right elbow and raise your right upper arm to shoulder height so your fist is at ear level. Then, start raising your right arm. We're gonna perform this exercise one hand at a time and we'll do 8 counts for each hand. This exercise is also applicable if you're on a wheelchair. Now it's time to use your other hand. Try to do this exercise on a pace you're comfortable with to avoid injuries.
Finally, we're gonna finish our workout with inhale, exhale. Breathe in, breathe out. Congratulations, you finished today's breakout. Be sure to drink some water. Also, if you need more time to rest, you can pause this video until you're ready. Okay, we'll see you on the morning show. And it's time for our daily show where we provide you with educational facts and trivia for your daily knowledge. Man, I miss saying that line. Okay, let's start with our observances. Our first observance for today is Paperclip Day. Get ready to get your papers organized. Paperclips are flat pieces of metal that can hold papers in place without disturbing them and don't need to be bent or pinched together to work. They gained in popularity at the end of the 19th century when various types were created to many patterns were applied for. This was the time when steel was new and the machines used to make large quantities of paper clips were invented. Next up, put your pillow on your fridge day. Wait, what? As strange as it sounds, there was actually an interesting history behind this tradition or practice. In the early 1900s, people would put pieces of cloth or linen in their larders, which are cool areas for storing food kind of like a fridge that does not have any electricity. The reason why people do that at that time is because that they hoped that this would bring good fortune and prosperity in a form of plentiful amount of food, as well as fertility. Eventually, the actual refrigerators that we all know now began to replace the larders. The cloth tradition was lost as well until a new approach came with the creation of putting a pillow on your fridge years later. Also, just to make things clear, this tradition is done by putting the pillow on top of the fridge and not inside. So, don't put your pillows inside the fridge, even if you want your pillow to smell like pasta or ribeye steak. Next is, end of the Middle Ages day. Many historians consider this day in the year 1453 to be the date on which the Middle Ages ended. It was on this date that Constantinople, the capital of Byzantine Empire, fell to the Ottoman Empire after being under siege for almost two months. The Middle Ages, sometimes also known as the Dark Ages or Medieval Period, began in Europe with the fall of Rome in 476 CE. And our last observance is National Biscuit Day. Yummy! Biscuits came about shortly after Civil War and were inexpensive, in part because they don't require yeast. They were able to expand and rise because their ingredients were beaten vigorously and because they were folded in such a way that air could be trapped in them. Biscuits also were favored because they could be made quickly and could be easily added to meals. They also caught on because they were better than bread at absorbing gravy. Personally though, I like butter and honey on my biscuits. Now this is a new addition on my first time doing this. It's the animal of the day. For our animal of the day, we have meerkats. They're looking at me right now, aren't they? Meerkats found in Africa are tremendous diggers and can dig up their own body weight on earth in only a couple of seconds. They are a very extremely social animal and often groom and play with each other. They tend to live in groups of around 20, although far larger groups are not uncommon. Meerkats have highly developed sense of smell, hearing, and vision. The black bands around their eyes protect them from a glare of the African sun. They also have specific vocalizations to communicate different information such as a type of approaching predator. Meerkats also enjoy sun bathing. In the morning when they come out of their burrows, they will often spend time simply standing up and warming themselves by the sunshine. Then our plant of the day is called the Sampaguita. 
The salpaguita is a tropical flower that produces quite a sweet scent and grows wild throughout southern Asia and the South Pacific. The salpaguita is considered the flower of love in many Asian countries, especially in Indonesia and the Philippines. It is used in weddings and religious ceremonies to symbolize love, devotion, purity, and divine hope. For today in history, at 11.30 a.m. of this day in the year 1953, Edmund Hillary of New Zealand and Tenzing Norgay, a Sherpa of Nepal, became the first explorers to reach the summit of Mount Everest, which at 29,035 feet above sea level is the highest point on Earth. The two, being part of a British expedition, made their final assault on the summit after spending a fitful night at 27,900 feet. The news of their achievement broke around the world on the 2nd of June, the day of Queen Elizabeth's II's coronation, and Britons hailed it as a good omen for their country's future. In 1848, Wisconsin became the 30th U.S. state. Wisconsin is known as the Badger State, though it doesn't really refer to the animal, but instead to the 1820s lead miners who traveled for work and the tunnels to sleep in and keep warm, uh, much like a badger. Also, an interesting fact about this state is that the first ever ice cream sundae was served in Two Rivers, Wisconsin in 1881. For our notable figure born on this day, we have John F. Kennedy in the year 1917. One of America's best-loving presidents, John Fitzgerald Kennedy was born into a politically and socially prominent family in Brookline, Massachusetts. He was the first American president to be born in the 20th century. John F. Kennedy was also the youngest ever to be elected president. While Teddy Roosevelt was the youngest president, he only came into office due to the death of President McKinley, so he became a president not by election. For our notable figure who passed on this day, we have Oscar Brown. Oscar Brown was an American singer, songwriter, playwright, poet, civil rights activist, and an actor. Some of his famous songs are titled That Deer, Afro Blue, and Work Song. For our daily dose of art, we have the Great Wave of Kanagawa. This art piece is a woodblock print by the Japanese Yukiyue artist Katsushika Hokusai. It was published sometime between 1829 and 1833. The composition comprises of three main elements, the sea whipped by a storm, three boats, and the Mount Fuji. It is believed that the tsunami that hit northern Japan in 1896 helped make the Great Wave an internationally recognized work of art. For our career spotlight, we'll talk about voice actors. Voice actors are those people who make your favorite game or animated characters come to life. Though these professionals are not in front of the camera, they still need to act while reading their script in order to match their character's personality and emotion. And just like acting, they need to audition for a role. Game companies and animation studios would then select a voice that they think would fit their character best. No formal education is required to begin a career as a voice actor, though a bachelor's degree or training in acting may be an asset to those who wish to enter this field. So, do you want to be a voice actor? Then, we have the word of the day, furtive. It's an adjective which means attempting to avoid notice or attention, or being secretive. And did you know that 11% of people in the world are left-handed? So, if you are left-handed, consider yourself special. Good morning, class. It's Karina here. We're going to be learning about the Spanish word of the day. The word is manos. It translates to hands. Can you say manos? Manos. We're going to move on to the Spanish phrase of the day. Lávase. 
plus monos. Monos. Lavase plus monos. Translates to wash your hands. So remember you guys, lavase los manos. See you next time. Marina, what are you doing? Thank you, Karina, for that awesome lesson. And that is the end of today's episode, guys. Hope you like it and learn something new. Thank you so much for joining me in today's episode. I get to hang out with you again. Yay! Well, have a great weekend. And as always, we will see you on the next one.